Hi, everybody. This is Rebecca Freedom. Welcome to Heard Not Seen. This is episode number 47 for all of you that are numerically challenged. And today's topic is the secret that destroys all relationships. That's right. There's a secret floating out there, folks, just living in the basement of your mind in your subconscious, just trolling you at night. It is just wreaking havoc on your relationships, specifically your romantic relationships, otherwise known as your mirror, (laughs) because we're all pop culture informed these days. And uh, and we're just going to dive like probably surface level on this because diving deep is over is totally overrated. We're just going to like skim the surface on what the secret is that is destroying all your relationships. Um, but before we really get into this, I want to do something on episode number 47 that I've not done before, which is saying something because my episodes are always explicit and I do a lot of shit on them. There's been you know, from poetry to clearly some of the wisest information that's ever been channeled through anybody has showed up on the episodes. I'm also humble, obviously, just humility is just spilling out. But this episode 47, I have decided to do something really amazing. So listen to the end of the episode to the very end. Don't cheat. I see you scrolling ahead. Don't do it. Listen to the whole thing because it's going to make the the thing that I'm going to do at the very end super, super juicy. So I want you to just take a minute right now, whoever and wherever you are in the world, and think about your relationships. And my producer's coughing in the background. Don't worry. He's just going to be checking up on some emails because you know what? Important people are just important. And you're one of them. So thanks for listening, important people. (laughs) Thank you for listening. All right, get get cozy. Get cozy. Get in a position that feels really comfortable. Probably Kama Sutra position number 132. Um, That's a good one. Leg over the head, clearly penis up. Uh, If you can't do that, then just, you know, sit in a chair comfortably or lie down with your head propped up. And just come into the stillness. Come because this is this is where and when our secrets can like cream rise to the surface. I'll wait. Go ahead and get there. Get comfy. All right, cool. Now that you're in that position, you're in that comfortable position. If you're single, start to really think about your last relationship, or maybe all of them, just the fucking train wrecks that have been your dating life. Just really go there, right? You know, I know for me, last year, 2016, was what you could say a dating circus, because one guy I dated who was like, I walked across America, hold space dot US or whatever, I walked across America, and he has a twin brother, to get sober, only to find out that when I met him, he was a statistic, he was not sober, but yet he was getting keynote speaking gigs and whatever else. And, and I got invited up to his like parents mansion, and they're multimillionaires, and he's like struggling. And it was just a crazy train wreck beginning of the year, he ends up with like four felony charges, because some girl, he messed with the wrong girl, he messed with a version of crazy that he could not rodeo. So, you know, so that was an interesting uh, shit show uh, last year. And then it's fun when you date somebody, i.e. just hook up with them on Tinder only to get a call from somebody months later after you've deleted them from their phone. And they're be like, are you dating Casey? Are you dating him? I'm like, what the who's? Ca- oh, she's like, <laughs> he was cheating on me with you. I'm like, oh, that's fun. That's fun information. That's yay. Exciting. And then those are particularly exciting ones when you sleep with someone and you're like, you know, I didn't even get a last name. I should probably go to the clinic. And they say, no news is good news, except you get that call 
with the no caller ID and you're like, fuck, fuck, fuck. And bring, hi, uh, just want to let you know your results came back. Boo. You got to go get the angry antibiotics and get rid of that, that chlamydia, <laughs> whatever it is. Or herpes, the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, you sores, pink pain in the ass. So little dating, little dating blunders. We've all been there, had that. If you haven't had that, lucky for you, you're probably two years old and haven't started dating yet. And if you were, that's weird. And you probably live in some strange, strange country that I don't want to know anything about. Um, so yeah, think about your dating life if you're single. Now, if you're not single, which there's a, you know, menagerie, a menage of not single. We have polyamory to choose from. Yay us. Not just one, but all together now. A little tribe followers. We get it. You want to have roadies. You want to have fans. You want to have groupies. You want to have people to do your bidding. Got it. Minions on board. Cool. Not single in that respect. Or let's go extreme. You're totally monogamous, like 100% faith-based, in it to win it, forever your girl, forever your guy, 1950s style, locked in monogamous. Holy shit, who's that hottie? (laughs) I'm seeing pictures of myself on the screen. They're big and they're beautiful and yay me. I know how to do makeup. Side note. So anyway, uh, or you're just dating. You're somewhere in between and you're in a relationship and it is just shitty. It is all the questions are coming up. You got you got the questions of is this the right person for me? What about our future together? What about our finances? I'm bored with our sex life. I I feel depressed. I'm not able to bl- fill in the blank. Like just the shit show that is relating to one another. And and I just want to yeah, like yay again not to be a super Buddhist about it. And what I mean by that is if you read uh, Pema Chodron's book, When Things Fall Apart, there's a section called Death and Hopelessness. Totally uplifting. But there's a sobering reality of that hope and fear are two sides of the same coin. So if we're just setting ourselves up for failure on either end, like, and and basically, she's like, if you design a life based on hope for security, um, you're you're basically going to be running after fear. Like fear will always be the thing that's motivating you. If you're de- deciding, um, designing a life based on hopelessness, groundlessness, at least you can be in the potency of the present moment. Super, super powerful stuff here, folks. And I am, um, you know, bringing it up for a little bit more of a deep dive in that, because I think it's really important that we get a sense of, um, of understanding, like how we're creating our relationships, like how we're creating them, because there is certainly, um, you know, the right way to do it and the wrong way, the functional and the dysfunctional way. And the secret lingers all this time. It's just there just waiting to bite you in the ass. So here's uh, an excerpt from the chapter uh, in When Things Fall Apart, um, Hopelessness and Death. If we're willing to give up hope that insecurity and pain can be exterminated, then we can have the courage to relax with the groundlessness of our situation. This is the first step on the path. Let me break that down. If we're willing to give up the hope that insecurity and pain can be exterminated. Like think about, again, whatever pain is coming up, whatever discomfort is coming up in your relationship, someone's making more money than you, or you're making less money, or you're not sexually compatible. You've fallen out of love with the person. You feel like you're too fat and you're just, you're just ugly. Every time you're in the mirror, you just hear your mother's voice of like, you have French love handles, you're never going to have a man or whoever teased you, whatever bully is in your head, whatever inner critic is there, the depth of discomfort um, threatens our body's survival. Just, it's just rattling the, the one thing our body is meant to do. Like the singular program is just like the impetus to keep living, the will 
to survive, which again, Viktor Frankl really, he did Man's Search for Meaning and the Man's Search for Ultimate Meaning, two different books. And he's a survivor of um, the Holocaust, Holocaust. And he uh, has really like a powerful approach to therapy, which is like will to meaning, basically, when we have like um, this, 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 like drive towards purpose, this sense of, um, of dignity inside of us. And that it, it makes quite a difference in how we frame our lives. And this is one of the pieces to it. This is how just framing your life saying that to think you can anesthetize pain, that you can get rid of it or numb it out or is a fool's errand. It's going to continue to show up. This is not, this is, and here's the kicker. Pain is, and fear, they're both contributors to this one secret. They're contributors to the secret that destroys. Like this secret rips relationships apart. It rips people apart. It drives people towards addiction. It drives people towards manic behavior. Like it is probably... One of the deep seated challenges, I would say, challenge is not even a strong enough word, like terrors of humanity. It's like we, and here's the, here's the leveling, it levels the playing field. No matter if you're a billionaire or if you're the poorest person on the world, you have it. It's lurking in there. How much it presents itself is entirely up to your skill set, your skill level. So again, think about where you're, you are in your relationship. Think about the, the pain and the discomfort and our first impetus, the first thing we do when we feel pain is it signals something is wrong, Something needs to be fixed, cajoled, changed, and it sends off the alarms, which for many of us, I'll, I'll explain this a little bit more, Of it sends off the alarms, which triggers us into our addiction cycle, and that addiction is to the illusion that we can end pain, that we can arrive at security that we can actually find nirvana here on earth. And I had a friend say something really great about enlightenment, since it seems to be such like a a favorite topic as, as if it's enlightenment, as if it's like a pill or a cure all that like, if I get enlightenment, then I will have everything that I've ever wanted. And, uh, and she said, light enlightenment is lighten up. Just stop taking yourself so seriously. Like stop taking the pain so seriously. Like, oh my God, this is the end all be all. Like if you have, if you, okay. And I want to say something for terminal diagnoses, like people that do have cancers and you do your body's in pain and, and it's not just an emotional pain or a mental pain or whatever else that is. It's, you know how pain becomes smaller as you face it. And so I write about this very topic in, uh, an elephant journal. The The article will be coming out soon. And I basically say that uh, an excerpt from the article that the one thing that destroys all relationships is this. Most of us don't choose to date, have sex, get engaged, or get married because we are so in love. It is because we are insecure assholes looking for a way to anesthetize the discomfort of impermanence with the illusion of security. Just going to let you mop up that truth bomb. You're welcome. We don't get it. We just don't, we don't really get it. So what, what if, if you had a concept of this secret, how much would that shift the pain in your life? And if you know this secret, it shifts you from this place that we go to a victimization of circumstances of if I could have security, then 
if they could read my mind and knew my thoughts, then I would feel love. If this, then that, otherwise known as ad hoc, ergo, propter hoc. Little Latin for you people. Little Latin for the masses. (laughs) So we do that. If this, then that. If I have this, then that. If I have this, then that. If I have, great. So here's the secret. That driving force, that language of this, then that, that fear that develops into hope, that creates the perpetuation, the cycle of discomfort, the the grasping after, um, and the the cycle of creating from hope is that we want to grasp something. We want to have something to hold on to, hold on to hope, where hopelessness is finally you're letting go and you're able to be a conduit. So here's the secret. Here it is. At the core of our being, there is a cancer growing inside of all of us. And the seed takes root the minute we believe and integrate the notion and the feeling that we are not enough. We are not enough for our Father. There will never be anything we can do to gain the approval of. We are not enough in our body. We are not attractive enough. We don't have enough magnetism. We don't have enough of that thing that we have placed as an object of our salvation. If only I had fame. This has been my crutch. If only I had this, then I would have enough money to have this experience. Yet somehow, in the midst of my not enoughness, in the midst of the sickness that enters people into insecure conversations, I've managed to manifest and not only manifest, but to get the fuck out of my own way and have a life filled with miracles. I'm going to get you there. We're going to get you there. But let's let's really sink into the discomfort, the hopelessness, the groundlessness of not enough. Like the job that you're working, is that really enough for you? Is that really the greatest expression of your being? Is the greatest expression of your being your rubric for a happy life? How has success been defined defined in your own mind? Like what's the reality that you're creating from? What is what are the seeds that are planted in the garden of your existence? What what things have you taken in and said, I will construct my world from this? Because I will tell you that the the beginning of the healing is this. There's no healing to be done. Can I get an amen or hallelujah? Right in right now. I want to comment on this. There's no healing be, to be done. Uh, the the author of um, Conversations with God, um, I, I'm not going to remember his, I'm just blanking right now, um, says, we are born at, into perfection. And perfection is a really tricky word. It's something that we... Um, get hung up on. And uh, Neil Donald Walsh, um, you can listen to Conversations with God on YouTube. Um, We get, okay, we get caught up on this leveling up, this doing better, the self-development, the self-help field, the, the constant expansion and growth, and, and that we fear the contraction, but life has a pulse to it. And you are the heartbeat and you're necessary. Your life is necessary. And the way that you're steering it and choosing it is necessary for all of us to be in this, the breath of the, of the earth and the breath of this existence and the miracles that are born from it. So sit in the groundlessness, the fear, the disgust, the shame of not enough. And how long? How long have you been creating? How long has your life 
been being ripped apart and your relationships destroyed by this sense of not enough. What approval ratings have you run after? How have you sought validation? Has it been through sex? Has it been through accomplishment? You know, and in which ways are you making yourself wrong? How have you made your existence wrong? Because that is the next phase of not enoughness. It's like, we just can't get it right. And there's a saying, you can either be right or you can be at peace. It's a choice. So before I bust into a full Pentecostal sermon about not enough that, uh, not enough that, not, I can't even say the words because I am enough. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I have been granted with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and you have to. It is a matter of receiving it, believing it, and opening to the power that you have and the potency that you be in this moment. Not enoughness is a marker of the lie that can be told because our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the forces of this dark world. Can I get an amen? I do believe that is Philippians. If I am wrong, I will change that in the show notes. We are not fighting against flesh and blood, people. We are, we are mirrors for each other. Every single human has the capacity for the depths of evil and for the heights of enlightenment to be leaders and to be destroyers based on how you are navigating this deep chasm of not enoughness, the, the, the buying into we are separate from rather than we are part of this whole. So I want to invite you into this moment. I'm going to invite you here fully to really review your life. Take stock of it. Maybe sit up from that position, straighten your spine, take a deep breath, roll those shoulders back and have a proud stance. What is your life today? How is it unfolding? Do you feel content? Have you been able to bask in the joy of your accomplishments? Have you been able to acknowledge the miracle that it is to read, to write, to breathe, to have a functional body, to be able to have food on your table, to live under a roof, to be able to have people that can be advocates for you if you are homeless, to be able to be part of this network that we call society, this this global heartbeat. You are part of that. And yet we are so small, just drops of sand on the shore, just little pebbles, yet so influential the minute we make a decision to say, I am enough. And the power house, the powerful word, the powerful words, and the key to get out of this the key to rise up, to claim your stake, to walk your path, and to be that bright beacon of light that shines into the world. And not just like some hippie girl who has got a great idea to have a dance party and a drum circle and surround, a, uh, get around a fire, but the game changers, the influencers, and not just those who are hawking coaching programs, which are all necessary and part of the program, but for those of you who are able to be able to step up into a reality that you are are allowing to move through you because you have decided to get out of your way and to stop the pain by running towards it rather than running away from it. Because we all understand this when we get to this point and it won't come a minute before it comes that you cannot be more than you need to be or less than you are any faster or slower than destiny provides for. And your real responsibility is your ability to respond. And you respond every day in every way that you're not getting better and better, but rather that you can speak the words I am powerful. I am beautiful. 
I am treacherous. I am mischievous. I am devious. I am the glory incarnate. I am humility. I am that. I am. And come back into that oneness till you're, till you're full. You're full, not with yourself, not with the narcissistic, narcissistic wound that didn't get healed because your needs didn't get met in a way that was in alignment with your spirit, but rather you were, be, you're being given away through the obstacles. Because I will tell you, and this is a quote from Denzel himself, that ease is threatening, more threatening to success than hardship is. Hardship is your friend. It is an absolute necessary thing for us to go through because the challenges that we face are the challenges in our minds. So here it is. Here's the thing that I'm going to do that I have not done before on any other podcast. I'm going to invite you into the collective because this is a conversation It's not just a podcast. It's not just a moment in time. It's an acknowledgement of a pervasive and persistent sickness, dis-ease, imbalance in our collective mind that somehow we're not enough. The invitation is this. Two things. The first is, is let's start a real conversation and let's do it online and gather together on the Facebook page and I'll leave it in the notes, Breakup Rehab Support Group. It's a group and you can join it. It's open and it's specifically for people who are riding the edge of relationship between the one foot in, one foot out, or they have decided to exit the relationship and to step into that powerful and potent transition place where growth is available to those who are to, to, who choose it and who don't just hang on to hope that they'll quote unquote find their person. So I want to invite you into the conversation again, which is um, go to Facebook, search Breakup Rehab Support Group. So that is the one thing. Now, here's the other thing I have not done. I invite people always to reach out to me if this is a topic that really touches you. But today I'm going to say the first five people that jump onto my website and schedule a free consultation, uh, I will also include in that consultation, which I never do. I just, it's just a time to get to know you and really to get to know where you're at in life and where you want to go. But in that free consultation, that moment in time that we enter into a relationship together, I'm going to give you information from spirit. I will open up the channel and share with you what God has for you what spirit has for you using my psychic and intuitive abilities. So the first five people that go to RebeccaFreedom.com, that's R-E-B-E-K-A-H Freedom.com, sign up right now for the free initial consultation. Tell me what's going on with you. Tell me about how not enoughness has really been in the in the behind the scenes or maybe in the forefront and we will we will consult together in a way to create more for you and to set you free. I really appreciate everybody listening this to this today. Um, again, share it with those you know who are struggling, who really have not found that center, or who are coming into knowing who they are. This is who this podcast is for specifically. Is if you are. Uh, have this sense of just massive discomfort in the form of anxiety or depression, I encourage you to reach out to me again at RebeccaFreedom.com. That's R-E-B-E-K-A-H Freedom.com. And be set free.